living Lord, I want to talk from the thought of Jira, from the subject, if you will. Unbelief is hazardous to your health. Unbelief, Jim, is hazardous to your health. Now, all of us know, no matter where you went to school, where you matriculated, all of us know that hazardous is taken from the word hazard. And then you say, Brother Charles Thompson, well, what is a hazard? Well, a hazard is an unavoidable danger or risk. Even though, Alan, sometimes it's even foreseeable. A hazard is something Brandy causes an unavoidable danger, peril, risk, or difficulty. Hazard is the absence or lack of predictability, chance, or uncertainty. And if we would pull all of that in the blender, Delbert, and blender it all up, it would tell you that a hazard is a situation that poses a level of threat to life, health, prosperity, or environment. You, you even have, for those of us who don't even know, you, you have in your vehicle, you have this thing that we call hazard lights. You don't drive, Bonner, with your hazard lights on just like you don't drive normally with your bright lights on. You only push that button and use your hazard lights when there seems to be some immediate threat of some kind either to you or to the vehicle. You don't push hazard lights just because you want to pass somebody or go slow. You only push them when, when there's a level of threat that could lead to bodily harm or vehicle harm. So we look at this text today and we talk about unbelief is hazardous to your health. After Jesus has presented such powerful teaching and and Matthew actually tells us what he taught them A after Jesus taught them the parable of the sower after Jesus taught them the parable of the wheat and the tares after Jesus taught them about the parable of the mustard seed after Jesus taught them about the parable of leaven after Jesus taught them about the parable of the hidden treasure after Jesus taught them about the parable of the pearl of great price after Jesus taught them about the parable of the net then he threw in treasures young and old and the text says after he was done with that teaching Jesus left Galilee and he traveled 20 miles west going back home to Nazareth. Now, Nazareth, in Nazareth, unbelief filled the hearts of his countrymen. Matthew actually ends this chapter, we read it in verse 58, by saying of Jesus, he did not many mighty works there, and he gave us the reason, he said, because of their unbelief. And I like the other Eminem brother. I like Mark because in recording the same incident, Mark takes it actually to go a step further. This is what Mark said. Mark wrote, and he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk. And the reason he couldn't do that work, and he healed a few of them, and it said he marveled because of their unbelief. Now, marvel in the Bible means to be amazed. So wh whenever you see marvel, that means amazed. And there's only two things in the Bible that amazed Jesus. It was faith and it was unbelief. Those are the only things that made him go, whoo. It is not simply, though, Reverend Jackson, that Jesus would do no mighty work in Nazareth. Mark tells us he could do no mighty work there. He was limited by their unbelief, even as the Old Testament declares, it says in, in Psalm 78, 41, it said that the people of Israel, they limited the holy God in their unbelief. It says, yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited 
the Holy One of Israel. They limited, according to Psalm 78, 41, they limited the Holy One of Israel. Now, I need you to, I need to wait. I need you to, like, crock pot. I need that to sit and sink in. Because I don't think that, that we, 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 we sense the, the weight of the impact of that statement. It said that they limited the Holy One of Israel. My, my, my. Alan, it, it baffles me. It baffles me that you can limit he that is limitless. That's, that's mind-blowing to me, uh, Reverend Owens, that the powerless can affect and limit the powerful. It, it, y'all, y'all, feel everything I'm saying. Listen, you can actually limit he that is unlimited. The creature can limit the power of the creator. It, it, it's right there in the text. The finite has the ability to limit the power of the infinite. The human being has somehow the power to limit the divine from operating. It, I'm, I'm, I'm right there in the text. You mean the, you mean the subjects can limit the sovereign? Uh, Y'all ain't get lit. He that created the heavens and the earth can be limited by the pitiful peasants that walk on the earth. Yo, y'all got, y'all, somebody better get this thing. The, the one that scooped out the valleys and piled up the mountains can be limited by folk that scatter the mountains. God, I mercy. The one that placed the stars in its place. The one that, that set the stars against the blueberry black drop that we call the sky. The one that put the sun and the moon in its place. The one that put scales on a fish. The one that put wings on a bird. The, God almighty. The one that put stripes on the zebra and spots on the leopard. You mean we can limit? Unbelief, baby, has this to your health. As we see throughout the scriptures, unbelief is hazardous. It poses a threat to your life, your property, your environment. Hebrews 3, 17 through 19 says this. But with whom was he grieved for 40 years? Now, we talking about being in pain or mad. God was mad at Israel 40 years. That's a long time to be mad. Like some of y'all, y'all been mad that long since early on. Y'all been mad. Some still mad. Don't even know why you're mad. Whom was he grieved 40 years? Was it not with them that had sinned? Whose carcasses, whose corpse fell in the wilderness? And see, here's a big one, because he said, with those who sin. And see, I'm going to get you, because we think sin, Reverend, first thing we do, we go to adultery, stealing, drinking, drugging, gangbanging, pimping, prostituting, whatever it is. But watch this. What, the sin in here is going to fool you. And to whom swear he that should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not. So then we see that they could not enter in because of their unbelief. What was their sin? Rep, they didn't believe God. Y'all talking about, see, he going with her, he going with... And you sitting up in here unbelieving every week and talking about who going with who. Sinner, sinner, chicken dinner. He said they unbelief. And we're always thinking about your actions. Well, it's some of your inactions that's causing you to sin. What do I mean? Reverend, you know you should be tithing and ain't. That's sinning. It changed the whole story, don't it? Uh-huh. Y'all looking at all them people doing all that stuff out there. You don't think about going by there touching that. It's sinning. I don't know who told you touching that's going to bless you. It ain't. Unbelief is has to you hear from us reading the scripture. In this passage of scripture, we actually see it. We see it, says so Prue. We see unbelief affecting people in three ways. Watch this, Anthony. In three ways. First of all, 
First point. It blinds your eyes and you become skeptical. It blinds you. It Stevie Wonders you. It Ray Trousers you. According to my wife, it Timothy Troxlers you. It blinds you. A skeptic is that person who doubts. They got questions. See, watch this. You say, well, how did it blind their eyes and how they become skeptical? Well, if you look at the text and you look anything before the text, you see that miracles, Andy, were happening. The dead were raised. The lame were walking. The blind were seen. The dumb was talking. Lepers were being cleansed. Devils were being cast out. Fish were being multiplied. Fig trees were being withered. Strong winds were being stilled. Waters were becoming wine. Fevers were being run out of town. Hemorrhages were being held up. It was obvious that God was working. But as I shared with Dr. Matthews, I believe, I think on last week, the Bible said, there is none as so blind as to those who will not see. Even though it was obvious that God was working, unbelief blinded their eyes to the obvious. People today, my brothers, my sisters, they're still blinded even though it is obvious that God is real. Some people say, and I'm getting ready to debunk that. Some people say that I would believe in God if he would prove his existence. Serious? You want to hang up? Is that your best answer? I'm going to give you a chance to call somebody. Is that it? Or do you need a lifeline? Because Psalm 19, 1 through 3 said, you lying. Yeah. It said, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork, which means the expanse of heaven. He said, day unto day ordereth speech and night unto night showeth knowledge. Verse 3 said, there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. And you going to tell me if he... Every time you see a flower bloom, that flower is pointing you to God. Every time the leaves fall off the trees in the fall with nobody plucking them off, the tree is trying to tell you God is real. And then in the spring and summer, when they go back up there without nobody putting them on, it's telling you there is a God. And then when they change colors from the fall to the summer with nobody painting them, they're trying to tell you God is real. You see the sunshine every day and, and the snow and the rain. And you're talking about if he would prove himself. We can't make it snow. And we can't make it stop. Then Romans 1 Verse 18 through 20, if, if Psalm 19 didn't bust you out, Romans is getting ready to. Because it says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Watch this, who hold the truth in unrighteousness. You actually got the truth in your hand. You just exchanged it for a lie because you didn't like what it said. Because that which, watch this, which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it to them. God showed it to you. Why do you think people in homosexual relationships, why do you think one automatically becomes the man? Because you see what it's supposed to be because God showed it to you. 
And now you're going to take that and twist it and saying you don't need a man while you're looking like one. Pants sagging. Shoes ain't tied. I had to tell Joshua and I, we're in the store and, the, and she shouldn't have been doing. Just, she gave Josh something. He said, thank you, sir. She looked at him all funny. I said, no, no, you the one look like a man. Don't you blame this kid for calling what he saw. You don't mind being that and if somebody call you out, then you're looking all funny. No, you should have looked. You gonna get on my kid? I mean, he made him. <laughs> no, I'm serious. But the reason I'm saying is one of them, and psychologists will tell you, one of them. I don't care if they get together at five o'clock at five o one. One is gonna be the dominant and to take the man's role. Why? Because it's been manifested. Henry was talking about this this morning. God, the devil always try to counterfeit what's real. He don't counterfeit fake stuff. How would you know that there needs to be a man in this relationship? Because God then showed it to you. I don't need no man. Well, why are you buying all them things shaped like one? I mean, talk to me, y'all. Jerry, am, I, am I telling the truth? You don't need one. Well, put that up. No, see, it's time to get real. Everybody playing games. And then y'all gonna want to have a man and go get somebody's sperm. Where you think that came from? A man. Even if he a piece of man, it's from him. You can't get sperm from two ladies. Speaking truth to power, there's more y'all uncomfortable. Like he talking about sperm and now this stuff rep need be. No, you you God didn't manifest it to you. He said, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power in Godhead. So the Bible said, so they are without excuse. Well, read my word, but they didn't tell me. No, no, I, I, I let the sun shine. You should have saw me in that. I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm in the Bible, y'all. Watch this. Kim, you okay? I always judge by Kim. Okay. Sometimes she get invisible and I'm not related to her. Watch this. Watch this, Pam Holly. The very point the skeptic is making, that upon which he or she has stacked up their case against God, is on the exact opposite side of the Christian faith. I'm getting ready to share with y'all something this morning. I don't even want to offer. Y'all don't give me nothing. It's worth it, but don't give me nothing. I love y'all to death. Watch this, Reverend. The person who says, if God would reveal himself, if he would reveal his existence, I would become a believer. That's impossible. Because that goes against belief at its very, watch this, at the core. You say, Reverend, how is that? Watch this. If God proved his existence, you couldn't be a believer. You could only be a follower. But you couldn't be a believer. For if God proved himself, there would be no faith required. And the Bible said, for by grace you are saved through faith. You couldn't be a believer if he proved himself. You'd be a follower. But you couldn't believe it because you need faith according to the scripture. I should just open the door, Reverend. Y'all waiting for me to ha! Ah, I just said something. God is interested in developing your faith because faith is what's going to move you in the ages and in the stages to come on your spiritual journey. See, God has given you evidence and he has given you indications, but he has not given you proof because if he gave you proof, you couldn't be a believer. You could only be a follower. 
And he don't want followers. He won't believe this. And so unbelief blinds your eyes and you become skeptical. Even, even Nicodemus, even Nicodemus, who was a member of the Sanhedrin council, who was a, who was a ruling Jew, he, he even understood something, something, this, something different about this cat. I, I can't ignore facts. Nicodemus, the scripture said, John said, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus who was a ruler of the Jews. It said, the same came by night to Jesus and said unto him, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher come from God because can't nobody do the stuff you... Man, can't nobody walk on water like you. Can't nobody get dead folk up like you. Can't nobody take fish and fish and make more fish. He said, I don't understand everything, but I know you must be connected to God somehow. Y'all got to be related. We see babies born. We see it being 80 degrees sometime in February. Sometime 10 in June. And we still don't believe nothing. You seen the boy standing on the corner. Cracked out. And now you see him dressed up. In his right mind. Got a job. Taking care of his wife and his son. God turned his life around. And you still talking about God ain't real. Who you think turned Leroy around? He couldn't. So number one, it blinds your eyes and you become skeptical. Secondly, Ken, it poisons your heart and you become cynical. That's this, Quintoya. It poisons your heart and you become cynical. I'm in verse 55 through 57. First point was in verse 54. They said, this cat can't be. Man, we know his brothers. You become cynical. Watch this. Uh, now, a cynic is a person that's bitter or a person that sneeringly has a sneeringly cynical attitude. They distrust everything. They contemptuous. They pessimistic. They just cynical. Ah, that ain't, ah, ah, ah. Y'all know any of uh, them people? Yeah. If some folk, you, you say good morning, what's good about it? <laughs> what? How you doing? How you think I'm doing? Excuse me? Good day, ain't it? What's so good about it? God, good, and he ain't good to me. Gee whiz. See, when a person will not believe, Leisha, his or her heart will inevitably become poisoned. Watch this. Toward the family of God. Yep, watch this. These cats, look, look what they said. I ain't making it up. It's right here in the Bible. Look at verse 55 through 57. These cats said, ain't, ain't his daddy a carpenter? I mean, it's in the text, right? I ain't making it up. Look, look at verse 55. Ain't, ain't, ain't he the carpenter, son? I mean, y'all talking about miracle worker. His, I know his big head daddy. Look, ain't his daddy a carpenter? And he ain't even a good one. He's just an ordinary carpenter. Yeah. This ain't no scholar. This ain't no rabbi. He ain't no mystical miracle worker. We know his dad, the carpenter Joseph. And let me tell you, ain't that Mary's boy? Listen, y'all know about Mary. Y'all know about. That's the little chick got knocked up before they tied the knot. That's what they. That's what they said. That, that was an insult. And they said, we know his, his brothers. Look, they're James. There he is. Jose, Simon, Judah. He ran out here telling me he's the son of God. <laughs> What's wrong with him? <laughs> this cat ain't no miracle worker. He's a lunatic. Cynical folk. You see, the unbeliever will always attack the family of God. His heart will become poisoned as he points out the problems of fallen Christian pastors or his Christian neighbor. He will point out problems in the family, even though like those in Nazareth, his facts may be wrong. This is what people get me. They don't think through ethics. Man, I ain't going to church. All of them hypocrites in there. Where'd you just leave? Man, I just left Walmart. Uh, how many was in there? I'm quite sure there's one or two in there. And you didn't have no problem. Going to where they were. How many?
many in the casino, you think? Didn't stop you from going there. So you just don't want to be around them in church. You just don't, you don't mind being around them in the number house, the crack house, the dope house, the cat house. You just don't want to be around them in God's house. I'll tell you one thing. I'd rather go to church and be around a few of them than go to hell and be with all of them. And let me help you. There are no hypocrites in the church. Now, there are hypocrites in the building. But ain't none in the church. It's going to take you a minute. You'll get it on the way home. Watch this. Since no one, Bobby Williams, not even the most avowed atheist or skeptic cynic, has ever been able to find one thing wrong with Jesus. Judas, the man that was with him for three years, the chairman of the trustees, the one that had the money back, he was with Jesus night and day. He brought the money back, threw it down and said, my hands have betrayed innocent blood. I've been with that man three and a half years and he ain't done nothing. Peter said, no guile was in his mouth. So since they can't find nothing with him, they find stuff wrong with his children. That's you and me, the church, the body of Christ. You've been heard these before, you can probably sell it. Can, can you believe that joke, that TV preacher? That's a joke. And believe me, some of my jokes. And they ain't even funny jokes. Look at those hypocrites sitting up there in church. That's what people say. Because they can't find nothing against God, so then they attack his, the people. Some Christian there, huh? Mm-hmm. I ain't going to that church. All the pastor's interested in is people's money. Well, you should know that ain't true because you've been here 10 years and it, it, you know that ain't the truth. Because we ain't put you out yet. And you ain't gave enough for us to buy paper plates. I'm just saying, man. <laughs> and then they want to put everything on the plate. See, that's why I'm glad we Christians. Because if we fed you on how you paid us, some of you could just put open one hand. Yeah, people say stuff like that. I ain't going to church. All they're going to do, every, all I see preachers driving around with new cars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I ain't going to there. All they were trying to do is go with all the women. You mad because the preacher don't want to go with you. <laughs> I just tell the truth. Be, be mad. They think if she moved, they'd be in. Guess what? You would never be in. <laughs> just trying to tell you. So ain't nobody blocking you. You blocking you. But now, ask yourself, does your speech say you are a citizen of heaven or a cynic from hell? If you saying these things, you ain't a citizen of heaven. You can figure out where you land. Thirdly, let's hold you too long. I told you I wouldn't be long. It robs your joy and you become sterile. You are incapable of producing. Over your spiritual womb, there's an out of order sign. Because you can't produce no power. Because you're sterile. Your joy has been robbed because of your unbelief. See, listen, I'm right down verse 58. Watch this. And he did not many mighty works there. Why? Because of their unbelief. You remember. Perez, Judah, 
Judah means praise. And sometimes, Sandy, the spirit of praise is in the church, but he can't find a womb. To give birth, because every womb he coming to is sterile. So Judah is present, trying to give birth to ministries, trying to give birth to purpose, but he can't. So many miscarries are happening in the spirit world because you can't carry the blessing the full term because of your unbelief. So many spiritual abortions are being performed because you're aborting the process of the light and life of God that's coming through because of your... Look, look. God will not work outside the arena of faith. He won't do it. He won't do it, Melissa. No, he won't do it. God has chosen to limit himself in certain ways because they didn't believe. And he said, because you don't believe, I ain't going to work. God Almighty. And as a result, Sister Joyce Young, miracles were missing. Healings were not happening. Joy wasn't exploding. Why? Did God lose any power? No. See, listen. You can have your bill paid. You can actually pay consumers. You can have your bill paid. You can have your grass cut. You can have the beds made. You can sweep, vacuum, dust. You can clip your flowers. You can do all that stuff. But even though your bill has been paid, if you don't flip the switch, you ain't getting no power in your house. What am I saying? If you ain't plugged into God, even though the power is there, you're going to be in the dark spiritually. Because your switch ain't been flipped. How do you flip the switch? By believing him. Listen, my brothers and my sisters. Don't limit God by your skepticism. Don't limit God by your cynicism. Don't limit omnipotence by your obstinance. Listen, don't threaten your life. Don't threaten your health. Don't threaten your property. Don't threaten your environment by unbelieving. You need to say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If you withdraw yourself, where in the world would I go? I don't understand everything from Genesis to Revelation. But what I do understand, I'm like Nicodemus. I know you got to come from God because can't nobody do what you've been doing. God, I don't understand everything. But I got enough faith to believe that you died for me on Calvary's Hill. I believe that they put you in the ground. I believe that you rose again from the dead. God, I believe you. And if you tell God that, he'll save you. He'll redeem you. He'll surround you in his love. He'll give you purpose. He'll give you power. All you got to do is believe him. They asked Jesus in John chapter 6, they said, Jesus, what must we do to believe the works of God? He said, believe on him who he sent. Down there, he's saying, you ain't got to flip benches. You ain't got to speak in tongues. You ain't got to cook cakes and pie. You ain't got to put pennies up here and open the curtain. You don't. He said, all you need to do is believe me. Because we see, remember in Hebrews, those carcasses that fell in the desert, it wasn't because they was committing adultery. Mike, he said, they didn't believe me. It wasn't that they was gang banging. It wasn't that they were stealing. He said, y'all didn't believe me. And because you didn't believe me, you won't see the promised land. You saying, Rim, what they got to do with us? It's some folk in here now. You still living in Canaan. And God didn't promise you the promised land 400,000 years ago. And you still not there. He said, it's not that I moved Canaan. The fact is, you don't believe. God, how you know don't believe? He said, because you're acting like a Canaanite. And not like a child of God. 
So my brothers and my sisters, I just showed you through the text. As we're going to be talking about all week, filling in the gaps of our faith. I just showed you, I made it crystal clear. Unbelief, baby, is hazardous to your health. It's dangerous. We saw where a generation died. The only ones over 40 made it was Jacob, I mean, was Joshua and Caleb. The rest of them died in the wilderness. God, what did they do so bad? They didn't believe me. God, what do you mean? He said, I showed them 10 times in, 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 in where were they at? Uh, Egypt. They saw the sea open up. They saw the hail come down. They saw the moraine of cattle. They saw the frog. They saw all of that. And they didn't believe me. And them same folks said, and you remember in the text, Deacon Nash, resident theologian, you remember when the rich man and the poor man died? We call the rich man Dives. He said, Lord, send him over here so he can dip his hand in the water because it's hot over here. And mama, the Lord said, well, well, first of all, there's a great gulf between us and him. So he can see you and you can see him, but he can't come over here and you can't go over there. And then Deacon Bonner, he said, I tell you what. He said, I got five other brothers at the crib right now. He said, please send somebody and tell them. Because my brothers are headed here, not over here. And what did the Lord say? He said, listen, they got Moses and they got the prophets. He said, if they don't hear them, even though somebody rose from the dead, he said, they still ain't going to believe. So what is God saying? He said, you got the word of God. He said, you got the man of God. He said, you got the woman of God. He said, if you don't believe them, you wouldn't believe me if I split the sky. Because y'all would say, well, that didn't really happen. It was something wrong with the roof. God is not in the games. And he's saying, if I prove myself to you the way you wanted me to, you couldn't be a believer. Because it would require no faith. And what I require from believers is faith. So if you're here today, you don't have to remain a skeptic. You don't have to remain cynical. If you're being tired of robbed spiritually, then I suggest that you become a believer. Not in Macedonia, not in Baptist, but a believer in Jesus. We preach Jesus Christ and him crucified. We don't put no stock in the, 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 the domination, all that stuff. We put the stock in Jesus. He's the one that hung, bled, and died. He's the one that rose again from the dead. He's the savior of the world. And that's who we offer you. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. If you're here today, my brothers and my sisters, and you've been a skeptic, maybe you've been one of those. God got to show himself to me.